Good biblical morning. Welcome back to Bible Read Along. Today we are looking at the other way. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Thanks so much for being here. Grab a Bible, grab a pen, grab a highlighter. Read along with us as we go through this chapter of Scripture. We welcome questions, comments. Um, my name is Daniel. Jesus has changed my life. I love the Word of God. And I'm here with Ashley as well. She'll be in the chat. And uh, we welcome your comments, welcome your questions. We want to connect, build community, not only just read the scripture, but to, to build together and uh, join together in learning and growing. So we are so glad you are here this morning. Uh, it's been a while. How long is this chapter? Let me take a look. Not too bad. Um, but yeah, say hello. Let us know you're here. I see Matthew's here in Kelowna. As I said, my wife's there in the chat as well. Carolyn, good morning. Good to see you again. And feel free to share, comment, and invite some others as well. I know uh, this morning we are only live on Facebook, not YouTube. Uh, trying to just figure out why things are choppy and, and why the camera keeps stalling. So we're trying a few different things. So today we are live only on Facebook and then we will post to YouTube after that. But we are glad you're here. We're going to start this morning off with Home of Hope and then I'll come back and open up in prayer and we'll get into the word. So here's a great organization called Home of Hope. Uh, please go check them out, homeofhope.ca amazing organization and what they are doing around the world. Here you go. $50 a month can completely change a child's life in every way. Your donations and sponsorships are being used to entirely transform lives. Be a part of something bigger. Donate or sponsor a child today. Homeofhope.ca, great organization. Uh, again, go check them out. It's not just sponsoring children. If you go to their website, they have a whole list of projects, um, one-time gifts, ongoing gifts, whatever, helping change the world one life at a time. So that is it for Home of Hope. Let's pray. And let's get into the word of God today. Morning, Jeff. I'm not sure if you're in or out. I saw your name pop up a couple times there, but I hope you're watching. Let's pray. So Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for the life that we have. And God, I just pray that you teach us and equip us today. In Jesus name, Amen. All right, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. So, so far, Jeff's in. Awesome. Good to see you, brother. Jeff has been, I've known Jeff for many, many years. I believe he taught me even in Sunday school or junior youth. And then uh, we did some work together in young adults ministry. Um, great guy. So I'm glad you're here, Jeff. 
And um, so what do we know about Corinthians so far? Well, this is Paul's letter to the church in Corinth. This is um, a rebuke letter. It's a warning letter. Hey, we've heard you're doing some things that aren't quite right. Let's get them right. And so that's what he is working through here. And uh, it is interesting to see and to see what what uh, what they're doing, what he's saying. You know, there was some concern about leaders. There was con some concern about uh, worship, particularly communion. And so a little bit of, you know, things that he's been bringing out. He brought out some marriage stuff. He brought out being single um yesterday he brought out communion and now we start getting into some spiritual gifts now we have to recognize too there are specific warnings to the church in corinth that means to these people at these time in context and then there are universal warnings things that we can apply to the entire church at all times even today in history so some of this is a little bit of both but first corinthians chapter 12 if you're ready and you're ready to get in the word, hit that thumbs up, hit that heart this morning, and let's do it. Verse 1, concerning spiritual gifts. Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or, a, or other, Sorry, that's weird wording there. You know that when you were pagan, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. So, um, morning Milton in Colorado this is kind of a comparison here where he says, you know, if we have the Spirit of God, you can't say that Jesus be cursed if you have the Spirit of God. And you cannot say Jesus is Lord unless you have the Spirit of God in you. So you, this is, you know, the church in Corinth was well known for the spiritual gifts. They were doing all kinds of things, but, you know, some of it was not genuine let's just say that for now so let's keep going we'll get into that a little bit more there are different kinds of gifts thank god for that but the same spirit he distributes them there are different kinds of service but the same lord there are different kinds of working but in all of them and in everyone it is the same god at work so we hear a few different things here there's different kinds of gifts and the spirit distributes them there are different kinds of service but the lord the same lord and there are different kinds of working but in all of them the same god this is kind of a little quick insight i am a trinitarian christian i believe in the trinity and so I see that laid out here in this verse, because either it's God who gives these gifts, but the Lord is talking about our Lord Jesus that we serve. The Spirit gives gifts, the Lord we serve, and God is working in all. So I, I personally see all three parts of our Godhead in this. Now, can we understand the Trinity? Not always. Um, I could try my best to explain it. We could try and, um, you know, show you and, but really nothing, nothing will compare to what it really is. And it, at, at some point I had to just realize this is maybe beyond my understanding because it's God. God is here. I'm here. I don't understand all of it. Now, I believe these things will be made known. We'll learn about them, grow in them as we enter paradise, the kingdom of heaven. Um, but for now, all we, all I can understand is there's three distinct parts of God within one being of God. It is one, one. They are one, but they represent themselves to us in three different parts. So we see here the spirit distributes them. We serve the Lord and God is at work in all of us. Now, to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom 
Interesting. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same spirit. Now we're talking about spiritual gifts and it's interesting that Paul here starts with wisdom and knowledge. Um, that these are gifts of God, wisdom and knowledge by means of the spirit to another faith by the same spirit to another gifts of healing by that spirit to another miraculous power to another prophecy to another the distinguishing between spirits or discerning spirits to another speaking in different kinds of tongues and still to another the interpretation of tongues all of these are the work of the one and the same spirit and he distributes to each one just as he determines now let's talk about this just as he determines for a minute here because some christians there's two kind of camps on this as there is with a lot of things in the bible it's kind of like well we think this and we think this and sometimes people go in between or in the middle um as he determines as the spirit determines some people have looked at this and said that means he gives you one gift he determines that you get your gift and that's all you get the other camp says god will give you spiritual gifts as you need if you're in a situation that you need wisdom he's going to give you wisdom if you're in a situation that says you need knowledge he'll give you knowledge or faith or miracles or and so sometimes i tend to lean way more to camp too that he gives us what we need as we need it um, are there gifts that we continually can operate in? Yes, but there are gifts that he gives us at, a, at times because we have relationship with the Holy Spirit so that whatever we need, as he determines, he will give us the gifts needed for whatever situations we are facing. And so again, kind of cool to see just all sorts of different, different gifts here, knowledge, wisdom, faith, tongues, healing, miraculous powers, prophecy, discerning spirits, um, interpreting tongues. Um, but it is, it, all of these are the work of one and the same spirit. And he distributes to each one as he determines or as needed unity and diversity in the body, just as a body, though one has many parts but all of its many parts form one body. So it is with Christ. For we are all baptized by one spirit so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we are all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. So what is he saying? Pretty, pretty self-explanatory, but he's talking here about um, our physical body. Look at your body. When you see it, you say, this is my body. If I grab my hand, which I've injured, my hand is still a part of my body. My arm, I don't suddenly just say, well, this is not my body. This is something else. No, it's a t everything is a part of the same body. He's saying the same thing with Christians. We have come into the body of Christ. And we drink of the same spirit. What does that mean? That we have received the spirit of God that brings us from death to life, from darkness to light, that adopts us into the family of God as sons and daughters of the king. So we have, we have now entered into this because of the same Holy Spirit. And it doesn't matter if we, what we, if we were Jewish or non-Jewish, Gentile, if we're slave or free, big issues at that time, um, we are all one. And you see what he's done here is he has really elevated anyone that when we look on each other, we don't go, oh, I don't really like that person because whatever. And they're not really a Christian. No, that's my brother. That's my sister. We're in this together. And so that's, that's all he's saying here. We're one, we're one body. Um, Matthew, I see your questions. We will get to that as at the end here. So we're going to keep reading and then I'll come back and answer some questions about tongues. Now, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body. It would not for that reason stop being a part of the body. So just because you say, no, I'm not a part of that body doesn't mean you're not a part of the body. There's truth and then there's what you're saying. 
And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body. It would not be for that reason, stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body was an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed these parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. And if they were all one part, there would be, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. Sorry, I need to blow my nose. <sighs> All right. So again, very simple. Like if the body is just a big eye, all we do is see. And so this is not only to say we're all one. He's showing the importance of every single part of the body. And remember, he has said this is now this is a universal thing that relates to the whole church, not just Corinthians. But if we are all part of a body, we all have a function. And again, he's saying to you, he's saying to me through this thousands of years later, we have value. We have an important part to play. And so sometimes we can look and go, well, what's my part? I don't know. I'm not, I've never been on spate on stage. I've never been speaking. I've never led worship. I've never prophesied over anyone. I've never, but what is your part? And how do you add to the kingdom of God? And without you, we couldn't function as a body. We'd be missing a part of our body. Um, so he's, he's actually giving every single person here value and importance. Verse 21, the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the part that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. While our present presentable parts need no special treatment, but God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that the parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. And if one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. So again, this isn't about if you're seen, unseen. It's not about if you're on stage, off stage. People may not know what you're doing. People might not know, but your part is important. Well, all I do is pray every morning for my church and my pastors and my leaders. Nobody even knows that I pray for them. That's great. Keep praying. This is an important part of what, what the body is and we need you. The body needs you. And just because you're hidden or unpresented doesn't or not out front doesn't mean you're not important in fact you get special honor you get you know special treatment you are you are treated well above the others because we need you the most now you are the body of Christ and each one of you is a part of it and god has placed in the church first of all here we get into what's called the fivefold ministry in Scripture. God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, prophets, second prophets, third teachers, um, then miracles, then gifts of healing, of helping, of guidance, and of different kinds of tongues. Sorry, this is not the fivefold ministry. That's in uh, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, somewhere in that book. Um, but here he's restating those things. Uh, God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, prophets, teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, of helping, of guidance, and all different kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? No. Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? Now eagerly desire the greater gifts. And yet I will show you the most excellent way. And we get into 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter tomorrow. Um, and that's what it leads into. Remember, these are all connected. It wasn't like part one, part two, 12, 13. This was one letter. 
So he's saying we got all these gifts, different parts, and what are we going to get into? How to use them? Love. Um, eagerly desire spiritual gifts, he says here at the end, the greater gifts even. Again, what does this mean? Some would say, see, God only gives you certain gifts and you have to earn them or get them. Others would say, again, I fall more to this. Does, don't just be happy and go, wow, God's gifted me with wisdom and think you never need healing or faith or tongues or learn about these. Per, find out about them, pursue them, desire them, even if you don't operate in that gift. Are all apostles? No. What is an apostle? Someone who builds the church, starts from nothing, um, you know, corrects doctrine, these kind of things. Prophets speaks on behalf of God. Does everyone prophesy? Is everyone a prophet? No. But everyone can speak on behalf of God at the right time in the right moment if powered by the Holy Spirit. Do we all teach? No. Are we all? No. But we can use all of these gifts at different times. That's my interpretation of it. What do you think? Uh, let me know your interpretation of 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and the gifts of uh, the Spirit. Some of them, there's many more listed throughout Scripture that Paul talks about. Um, even hospitality and serving and the gifts of helps and the gifts of giving and generosity. And there's so many different areas that he talks about all these different gifts. The point of this whole chapter is God gives the gifts. He's working in each of us. We need each other. We can't do it on our own. We have to connect and be with each other. And the more that we are together working in our gifts, the stronger the body of Christ is and the more impacting it is in the world around us. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Um, I know Matthew had a couple questions. Let's go here. Morning, Mike. How many gifts? Matthew says, how many gifts of the Holy Spirit are there? Um, I don't know right now. So there's there's different sections. There's one that lists 12. There's one that lists nine. There's one that lists the nine fruit of the Spirit. Um, off the top of my head, I don't have the exact number for you, Matthew, but there are many different pockets in Scripture that talk about the gifts of the the Holy Spirit. Um, what are different kinds of tongues? Okay, again, two camps on this, one being languages, actual languages. Uh, we saw on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit was poured out, the building shook, they had tongues of fire, and they began to speak in other tongues. Now they went out into the city and people came and said, we're hearing the gospel in our own language. Now, so at that time, the gift of the Holy Spirit was tongues, meaning actual languages that were at on the earth at that time. And people heard them speak in their own languages. However, I don't believe that the gift of tongues is only other languages. I believe there is a heavenly language of tongues, um, which is more dominant throughout church history and today that we see the gift of tongues um, because why would there need to be an interpretation? Is it a gift of interpretation if you hear a language in your own language and you're understanding it? That's not a gift of the Holy Spirit. That's your own language that you're just understanding. So why would there need to be a discerning and a, um, 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 I forget what it's called now, interpretation of tongues if it was known languages. So either it means you speak a known language and the other person doesn't speak it, but they interpret it accurately. Could mean that. It could mean heavenly languages, unknown languages. Romans talked a bit about that too, that we speak to God with groanings and sounds that we don't even understand. Uh, there's other times in the Bible it talks about that they began to pray in tongues um, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Why would the Spirit give you utterance if it's another language? Is he just empowering you to speak another language? So I tend to be, again, more on the side of tongues is a spiritual gift. Um, and I believe there is proper ways, biblical ways to use it. It is for the edification and the building up of yourself. Again, if it is to build up yourself, why would we need it for others? We get into that in 1 Corinthians 14. Uh, so we are going to talk about that a little bit more.
I hope that answers a little bit of your question, Matthew. That's a great question, though. Um, yes, so Milton, great comment here. This is what is nice to live in the spirit, not in the flesh. He said, I must go now, but I will leave with you my spirit. Absolutely. And so often here in, in Bible read along, we've prayed, make me a Bible based, Christ centered, spirit filled Christian, because we need the word of God. We need the spirit of God. We need both working together. And Paul's writings, most of them, if I had to sum up Paul's writings in one sentence, it would be spirit filled life um, or spirit led life. And so that is exactly true, Milton. We need the Spirit of God, and that is so powerful that we have that. Guys, that's it for today. That is 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please feel free, share it out, let others know as well. Um, if if you'd like to come back, we hope to see you tomorrow. And, and moving forward, we should finish... Uh, oh, there's a few more questions. Let's get into it here. Um... We should finish Corinthians 13, the love chapter, and then 14. And that's kind of an interesting layout as well because they go gifts of the Holy Spirit in the middle. They go love. And then on the other side, they go more gifts of the Spirit. And we see this thing that everything actually revolves around love. The gifts of the Spirit without love are nothing. And we need love to further act in the gifts of the Spirit. So we see that and we need that. Um see if this will pop up here. Nope, I turned it off. Jeff has a question. What is discerning of spirits? Discernment of spirits. What does this mean? Um, this is a spiritual discernment of... Uh, I'd, I'd have to get into it a little deeper. The, the Cole's Notes version, the simple version here, is it's an awareness of knowing if the spirit of God is at work or other spirits, evil spirits, even discerning those, um, also discerning the spirits that people operate in. You're operating in a spirit of fear, a spirit of doubt, a spirit of, and it is a, un, an awareness of what spirit is at work because we are, we are in a spiritual battle. This is a spiritual battle. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of this age and darkness. So we the, the discerning of spirits is an awareness of what spirit is at work and how to bring the spirit of God to a situation. So that is a great question. Um, Carolyn says... Thank you, Lord, for the gifts of the Holy Spirit to build up the body of Christ and strengthen our faith as we grow together. Amen. And that's that's exactly what he's talking about. We get these gifts, but we're all part of the body. We're together. We're working together. Let's do it in love. Um, this is to build everyone up. Uh, Mercury, good to see you on here today as well. Mercury's part of our admin team. Great help to our page. And then... Um, Milton says, uh, I hope I got the right thing here. Thank you. May the spirit of Christ be with you. Um, and Mercury just said she never thought of discerning of spirits that way. So I'm good. I'm glad that that helped. Uh, that's it, guys, for today. Thanks for your comments, questions. I love these dialogues at the end. If there's more that you want to talk about still, put it in the comments. I will try and message uh reply to your your comments or if you want to talk personally you can message me as well we will see you tomorrow when we get to the love chapter first corinthians chapter 13 and i hope you guys all have an amazing day bible-based christ-centered spirit-filled body of christ get out there and go do it god bless you guys we'll see you tomorrow <laughs>